Hero Awakenings. That's what we're going to talk about today. I want to show you what they are, what they're useful for, who to get them on, how to get them as much as I can about Hero Awakenings. So first off, the way you can see if a hero is awakened is by these little Roman numerals inside the character portrait. You can see my Regulus has a 1 and my Wrath has a 5. This means that he is fully awakened and this means that Regulus has 1. You can see my Pyrus has 4 and my Midan has 3. So just simple Roman numerals inside the character cards shows you how many awakenings you have. So next we'll talk about how to actually awaken a hero. So if I go to my Lavania and want to awaken her, you can click this button here. You can only awaken in order. So one, two, three, four, five. You can't skip any. You have to go down the tree. And to awaken it, I can use this specific material. And this will allow me to instantly awaken. This is called an Epic Sage Soul Stone. And you can see it here in my storage. I have three of them. And it just allows you to awaken epic heroes instantly with a cost of one per awakening. So one for to get to level one. From one to two is again one. So each level just costs the same. Only one Epic Sage Soul Stone. The way to get hold of these Soul Stones Primarily, I actually get most of mine through guild boss rewards. So if we head over to the guild boss and we check the rewards, you can see there is the epic sage soulstone in the middle and there's also the legendary sage soulstone, which we'll go over later, but as you can assume, that allows you to awaken legendary heroes. Incredibly valued, probably the most valuable item in the game, I would say. Now the epic sage soulstone start dropping. You see they're not here in Nightmare 1, they start dropping in Nightmare 2 on the fourth reward tier. So you can only possibly get them from guild boss if you are getting two 1000 dragon blood or higher on nightmare 2 or higher so on nightmare 3 you can get them from reward 2 onwards and then nightmare 4 obviously you can get them from the first one so that's one of the ways to get them another way to get them is if you go to the dwarven association and if you go to the awakening shop you can buy them with this currency known as epic awakening tokens there's two currencies the epic awakening tokens and the legendary awakening tokens you can buy an epic sage soul stone which is like a one size fits all. This will allow you to awaken any epic hero at the cost of 500. Or you can buy from a choice of three specific ones for 400. So, you know, a 20% discount. These do rotate. Generally, if you see a hero that you really want to awaken, especially if it's an epic lord like Aeon, then they're quite worth getting because they're a lot harder to summon as we can now see the rates. Epic lords are significantly rarer to pull than normal epics. So the epic soul stones for an epic lord are very valuable as, again, they're harder to get. But getting just the Sage Soul Stones, the generalized ones, are very good as well. So I tend to just get the Sage ones unless there's someone I really want. Because if someone like Maul, I've pulled like 7-8 Mauls. So I, I'd, I wouldn't really recommend buying specific ones unless you really, really do need to promote that hero. So that's the two main ways you can get Epic Sage Soul Stone. A third way of getting Epic Sage Soul Stones is through Tide. Though these are not reliable as these are at fixed waves. You can get a handful from here, probably around 10 or so. So it's quite a good source, but again, they're not repeatable once you've got them, once you've got them. So the main sources, I would say, are Guild Boss and the Awakening Shop inside the Dwarven Association. So we know that you can buy them from the Dwarven Association, but you need a currency to buy them with. And the way you get that currency is by selling Epic Heroes. So if I go to sell here, everything is locked that is purple. However, I've got a couple of dupes with this guy. So if I sell one, I get 100 Epic Awakening tokens. So if I sell four of him, I can buy a specific token or five of him, I can buy one of the Sage ones for any hero. Very importantly, don't sell heroes you don't have a dupe of. It's not worth it, generally speaking. You, you want to make sure you have at least one of every hero. Even this guy who's considered incredibly bad, Daemon, I believe his name is, I, would, I was tempted to keep hold of his dupes because... He's probably going to get buffed in future. At the moment, he doesn't actually have a faction. He doesn't have awakenings, which is why I haven't fed them to himself. But if you notice, most of my heroes are awakened to some degree, and that's because I always just feed the dupes to themselves. You never know who's going to suddenly be useful or who's going to get buffed or what's going to change. So my recommendation is only sell heroes when you have maxed their awakenings already. So it will take you a while to be able to buy them from the Dwarven Awakening shop, but I think it's the safest option to go for. So that is how you get the currency to buy from the Dwarven Association. So now you can see I have 100 of this one. If you want the legendary one, these two seem to rotate quite slowly, by the way. I've seen people mention that you don't get quite a lot of variety with the legendary soul stones in the shop, unfortunately. And you may notice you can't buy the sage soul stone in the shop. You can only buy the hero specific ones. So you need to burn four legendaries to get one of these soul stones, which is quite a heavy price. And I would not recommend it. Just awaken your legendaries. This is super not worth it unless you are wailing or incredibly unlucky and pulled more than five of the same hero. So this is not super worth it here. I've never bought one myself. I still don't have any burnt and I've pulled a bunch of heroes. I haven't pulled that many dupes. So then we'll talk about what heroes are most worth awakening. We'll focus on the epic ones here because obviously the legendaries are incredibly hard to awaken. Though I'll talk about a bit of that afterwards. 
Wrath, I would say, is one of the most worth awakening. Bear in mind, you get him after a month of playing, and then the next month you get his soul stone. So you do get one of his soul stones for free, but he is incredibly worth taking up to Awakening 5. His first one guarantees that he crits using his soul basher. His soul basher is his passive effect. You can see it here. Every four attacks, the next attack deals 100% bonus damage. This guarantees it to crit, which isn't the most important, but it's, it's okay. It's not bad, especially if you don't have a 100% crit rate. He gets 15% crit damage, so that obviously works very well in unison with that. His third one inflicts burning. Burning is actually quite nice. It's some magic damage. It's 20%. It's per second, 5 seconds. So 100% extra damage in magic damage over 5 seconds is quite solid. Awakening 4 gives him 5% penetration. This is for armor, so very nice there as well. But Awakening 5 is the reason I really rate his awakenings. It grants him 30% self-heal on his heavy blows. Heavy blow is from his ultimate. And this basically just allows him to self-sustain. I use my wrath in Nightmare 4. And I can actually use him outside of my healer's range in Nightmare 4 and he can keep himself alive the entire fight start to finish without any additional healing just by using this Awakening 5. It's incredibly powerful. If you're still in the campaign stages as well, he's very good at dealing with just holding off a different lane by himself. He's very good in the Artifact Fragment raid for holding down lane spawns because he can kill them very fast and he can heal himself up. So I really rate Raph, I really rate his Awakenings. Definitely suggested for him. If you are using a Pyros, and you're fortunate enough to have pulled him. Awaken 3 is incredibly powerful for him, as you can see, increases the duration of his debuff, the delusional gaze. So this is another five seconds of 10% vulnerability to physical and magic damage, so that's very useful. If you have an Estrid and you're using her for content, Awakening 3 is amazing for her. It enhancements of her crack passive, allowing it to last permanently. I use this in my guild boss team. I place her down until that applies the debuff, and then I despawn her, and she's done her job. The 40%, the 30%, Defense down will last until the end of the boss fight, so it's an incredibly useful awakening. And you can use it in loads of places. You can use it in Artifact Fragment Raid. I've seen people using this in single target arena as well. So you can get a lot of use out of Astrid just from her crack. We have Maul as well. Maul has some really, really good awakenings. His old Abyssal Surge is kind of what he's all there for. Kind of what he's there for. It's a massive nuke. It pushes enemies and yeah, huge amount of damage and it comes up quite quickly. But with just one awakening, it will now freeze for three seconds, which is a really, really nice control and can help you massively in campaign stages. And it can help you through all of the gear raids as well. Very, very, very good hero for that. Second awakening, 5% crit rate, which helps gearing him. So that's nice as well. His third one makes his sort erosion passive slow. So his basic attacks will slow every now and then for a duration if you read the passive. So this will give him a 75% slow for 5 seconds on the attacks during the uptime of Sort Erosion. So a very nice CC. So you can see Free Awakenings kind of turns Maul into a CC machine. And one of Maul's biggest shortcomings is his cost. So minus 5 cost is very, very good on Maul. So his 5th Awakening is also very solid. Dropping his cost from 22 down to 17, which is much easier to use in a team. Dolores is incredibly important if you're building a guild boss team. She's also amazing in Gear Raid 1 and even Gear Raid 3. Anywhere you need to do a lot of damage fast, Dolores is just king. She really, really needs her first awakening. This is super important because it allows her to boost her allies' attack by 20%. Again, this isn't scaling on her attack, this is their attack. So giving your allies a 20% attack increase is just crazy good. A third awakening can help you if you're struggling to heal in guild boss, just enhance her healing a little bit, but mainly the first and potentially the third, but definitely the first awakening for Dolores. I think Theowin is pretty good. He's, he definitely requires at least the first awakening. He's used in a lot of places, but as you can see, all three of his major awakenings are very, very good. I can't comment on them too much because I haven't actually built him myself, though I feel like I might need to as he really does dominate the airborne arena, even still after his nerfs. He is still incredibly good. Just a lot of CC and actually a really good amount of damage as well, considering he seems to be more CC focused, but he does benefit a lot from all three of these awakenings. Though I definitely would say the first one is really, really important for that extra slow. And as Fiowin is a fusion hero, I'll just quickly talk about that. You can fuse Lightlock, Fiowin, and L Livian currently. And if you're using him a lot, most likely someone like Fiowin, then you may want to consider fusing multiple of him so that you can awaken him multiple times easier rather than burning actual awakening currencies into them. Just fusing dupes is a pretty clever idea. Do know if you fuse them to then sell them to get awakening tokens, it will actually only give you 80 rather than 100. It seems to be a measure to prevent people just farming out epic sage soul stones. But yeah, worth fusing if you're using him a lot. If you have a hollow, she is actually really important to get her awakenings on. She's used a lot in some guild boss teams for her rage restoration and her awakening one really helps out with that. Her Awakening 3 also increases her ult uptime, which again helps restoring rage to allies. 
and her awakening five also increases the amount of rage regeneration for her ultimate so all five of hollow's awakenings are very important if you want to use her in guild boss definitely try to get her to a5 if you are using an iona as your mage then awakening her will be very important as well she is one of the best epic mages in the game a1 seems very powerful and a3 as well which is flat increasing the damage by 50 percent on her starburst and increasing the duration of her ultimate by five seconds so all three are very potent as far as i can see Greed is the other solid AoE mage from the epic bracket and his awakenings are actually quite good. An increase of 10% chance to, in to trigger his basic attack effect. You really want to be procking this magic resistance reduction. Soul reaping stacks are quite good and his first one means here his ultimate will trigger both effects at the same time. So AoE damage and a slow. So I think his fifth awakening is actually very powerful as well. So those two mages I think are quite worth it. If you are using Imani in your guild boss run then her awakenings are very crucial. The first one means no weakening after exiting her ult, the third one doesn't matter at all, but the fifth one does increase her damage, so definitely the first awakening for sure. From some of the other marksmen, I would say that Brienne is actually really good as well. Physical penetration on her multi-shot, which is her ultimate, so I'd say the first awakening is incredibly important. The rest of them are good, but not as important, but the first awakening on Brienne is very, very good as well. For someone like Tariel, she is actually very, very strong. Her first one increases her damage by 10%, so that's solid. It's the fifth one that's crazy good for Tariel. It allows her to basically gain an extra 3 seconds of her ultimate whenever she kills someone. So she's sniping them across the entire map and anytime a single one of them dies it continues shooting. So I find her really good in the airborne arena for this. You can kind of just start it off and she just starts peppering through the waves one at a time while they're all the way at the other side of the map. And as so long as she keeps killing them it will keep going. But it's quite expensive if you're new I wouldn't really recommend going all this ham. Probably focus on some of the lighter ones but I think Brienne is better for this purely because she only needs one awakening to really shine. And Maul as well is crazy good with just a single awakening so focus on the single awakening heroes if you're newer to the game and again don't sacrifice heroes unless you have dupes of them and ideally only after you've awakened them to the point that you are happy with. Okay so that pretty much covers the epic ones. If you have any suggestions for ones I may have missed as I tend to have not built many fighters or healers just based on what I've pulled on my account then do comment below and let other people know something that I may have missed or suggestions for heroes that are definitely good awakening but do say what level they are it's best to awaken them to it's not always good to advise awakening them straight to five unless they really really benefit from it okay so we'll talk about legendary heroes and the ones that are most worth getting awakenings on i would suggest generally if you have a legendary sage soulstone then save it for either a legendary lord or for a limited hero because there's a good chance you'll just pull dupes of the other heroes it's really in my opinion not worth using on heroes that you can pull in a normal summon legendary lords are incredibly rare and limited heroes like reeve as Hor, Selene, Gwendolyn are not coming back unless specific time-gated events in the future. So right now you can't get them. So I would suggest those heroes, other than obviously As Hor and Selene, who are very, very weak. But the general premise of legendary lords or event limited heroes, those are the two that you want to use a legendary Sage Soulstone on if you're lucky enough to get one. But generally, just so you know, the good awakenings are A1. For Setram, it grants bonus damage to allies dealing to shields. This is obviously great for guild boss. Salazar has his bonus 10% chance to bleed on his basic attack from 15 to 25% chance to bleed. And it also means that his second part of his basic attack, since he hits twice, now also has a 10% chance to bleed. This is really good because it's really common for fighters in guild boss to run the Scarlet Hunt artifact, allowing them to deal bonus damage to bleeding targets. So more procs of bleed, more damage, it's, it's very very powerful. It allows his ult to do crazy damage when you're adding 30% bonus damage on top. I really rate Viona's basic attack. It makes it really easy to apply magic resistance reduction to enemies. Mortal Kiss is just something she fires on her auto attack and it kind of leaves this area effect around enemies. So being able to just constantly apply magic resistance reduction to enemies is really powerful, especially as a lineup for her ultimate, the Reaper's Grasp, Culling, Execute effect. So I think this is quite a solid one. It's not as crazy good as the previous two, but it is actually quite nice. As really in some of the later gear raid one stages, you want to be stacking debuffs for magic resistance reduction and also amplifying the damage they take. So I think it's quite nice to have another source of it and a more reliable source of that. Volker, you actually get her first awakening by clearing, I think it's stage 105 of Tide. And this reduces the revival time of ally heroes by 25% even if Volker is not placed. So long as she is one of your 10 heroes in your team. So this is very nice for gear raid 2. And you'll get her second one if you can clear 125. Which if you're watching this video you probably can't. Because only like 2 people I know can clear that. But good luck to you. Maybe you can. And it's, it's not much of a benefit for all that hard work unfortunately. Elowins is quite nice actually. It gives damage reduction for 10 seconds by 20%. Which is very useful in gear raid 2. So I do actually rate that one. I think it goes unsung a bit. Gwendolyn now... She's a limited hero, but I kind of feel like she deserves a mention here. Her Awakening 3 is insanely powerful for 
Gear Raid 2 specifically, but Gear Raid 2 is a very important raid and the newest content people are really struggling to clear. Awakening 3 on Gwendolyn is just insanely powerful. It grants a 90% shield, not just to the target it's cast on, but to all of the adjacent allies. Rather than what it would normally be at 45%, it becomes 90% on the target, as well as all adjacent allies to that target, which is just incredibly powerful for Gear Raid 2. So I, I actually really rate this. I feel like this is going to become a staple thing to use in almost any future content where there is a lot of burst damage. For that reason, I actually popped the only Legendary Sage Soulstone I've pulled in the entire game on Gwendolyn, and then I pulled another Gwendolyn moments later. So I wasted that slightly, as you can see, mine is A4. I guess more health means more shields, so it did boost my shielding potential with Gwendolyn, but it was super unnecessary, and her A5 is not amazing. So a bit unfortunate there, but hey-ho. Her Awakening 3 is incredible, so I still think it's kind of worth it. Captain Reeves is actually quite good. He's a limited hero, so I guess you could consider using a Soulstone on him, but I don't know if it's necessarily worth it. But for every four attack, the fifth attack... We'll deal 150% AoE damage, and he does magic damage, which is quite nice, to enemies in range, and it inflicts a one second stun. It's pretty good. I have built mine attack speed as well, but just the amount of CC from Reeve, and he's a curse hero, is it's very solid. So that kind of covers the legendaries I have. I'll quickly take a look at the gallery and see which ones I missed out on. The Awakening 1 for Zilla 2 is not super important, I believe. I don't have her, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's mainly used for the guild boss at the moment. And the guild boss is treated as having 100% HP all the time, I think. So her soul siphoning is always triggered regardless. I think it doesn't matter that they're 80, not 70%. I could be wrong. Her awakening free increase in the duration of her ultimate is actually really, really good. It's like nearly a 30% uptime increase. And a self-recovery of HP I don't think is super important. So maybe awakening free on Zilla 2, but they don't seem incredibly important to me. Araka doesn't do a great deal of damage. She's kind of there as a support just for her Lord benefits. So I don't think her awakenings are massively important, really. Awakening 1 on King Hans will be very, very good for Gear Raid 2 in the higher stages again. More shields is just amazing in that stage. And granting a shield equal to 110% of max HP, if that's the same for the allies around him, then that will be actually incredibly powerful. And the rest of his awakenings, are, are, I mean, they're decent, but they're nothing crazy. The first awakening is very good, though. More shields is very, very good for that stage. For Torador, the Infernal Legendary Lord, he can proc some stuns with his basic attacks, the Atrocious Trample, and it seems pretty good, but he's a defender, it's not really his territory to be focused on attacks and dps his fifth one does allow him to be reincarnated another time though so that is pretty insane i think but i mean that's the fifth one on a legendary lord that is incredibly rare to have so i don't think he's incredibly worth focusing on either hatsa is an amazing marksman she has some decent awakenings but the first one doesn't seem insane to me five percent bonus damage is nice but it's nothing insane her third one allows her to have the stealth effect for another 10 seconds so that's pretty good but again, it's nothing crazy. It's not really incredibly useful for a lot of content. In Gear Ray 2, she'll still just die. The AoE is everywhere. Her Awakening 5, however, does increase Ghastly Burst from 4 to 5 seconds. And it's an insane amount of damage. So this would be really, really good if you can get hold of it. But quite rare to pull this hero, unfortunately. But a very good Awakening 5, which is quite far down the ladder, unfortunately. Silas is a new hero. So it's quite hard to actually say how good he is or how good his effects are. I'm hoping to pull him this weekend. I think he's Awakening free from what I remember read really, really powerfully. It sounds like he could have potential in a guild boss team if he had an Araka, a Calypso, and a Setram in the same team. But I don't know. We don't know that yet. But to me, that's what it reads like. It reads like he'll be boosting their damage by 15%, which would be insane for a Setram and for a Calypso when you have an Araka Lord benefit as well. So I'm not too sure. It sounds like it would be pretty good. And the fifth one seems pretty good as well, but I think the Awakening 3, just because it boosts allies, the Awakening 3 for Silas seems very powerful to me. As for Ajax, the legendary dragon from the Unnameable faction, he has some pretty good ones. 40% crit damage is nice, but nothing crazy. 10% extra chance to trigger Thunder Strike is quite good, and increases damage 25% for 7 seconds after using Thunder Strike. You can see the synergy between Awakening 3 and Awakening 5. These both seem pretty good to me. Nothing crazy, but definitely would boost his damage output, so quite good, but I, I still think other mages are stronger. But he does apply good debuffs. Morrigan, the legendary lord for the curse faction. Bonus damage for her basic attack. Shortens revival time. Generates a ground effect upon death. And curse bombs explode. They, they seem decent. As for Venoma, she is the legendary lord for the esotericist faction. Her first one seems decent, but nothing crazy. Her third one applies curse, guaranteed, every five attacks. Which is quite nice. Three seconds of being unable to attack would be quite good in Gear 2, but that is every five attacks. So it's a bit late at that point for a lot of that content. But the Awakening 5 allows you to basically attack more targets, which is spreading more debuffs, which is what she focuses on. So I think, yeah, there's potential there, but again, it's quite far down the tree. 
Now, more importantly, Twin Fiend, he is the legendary lord to the Infernal Faction, one of the absolute staples in Guild Boss. You really want Awakening 1 on him. To make him outshine Pyros, you need Awakening 1, because it grants him damage vulnerability of 25%, which beats out Pyros then. It's kind of weird that you kind of need this for him to shine over Pyros, but this is a very, very powerful Awakening 1, so definitely go for this. If you have a Twin Fiend and you have a Sage Soul Stone, I think it's worth using on a Twin Fiend. So correct me if I'm wrong below again, I don't have him, but from what I know about my, my friends and guildmates who do have him, Awakening 1 seems to be a huge deal. Awakening 3 grants 40% crit damage, which is decent, but nothing crazy, and increases the efficiency of rage recovery, it's quite nice, so you can get his ult up more often. With these guys, the Lords for the Infernal Faction, you want to be spamming their ults as much as possible to get the focus fire effect firing as much as possible, so I still think Awakening 1 is really the important one for the Infernal Lord. Twin Fiend. So a bit long-winded there, I just kind of wanted to give you a brief overview of the most important ones in my opinion. There's definitely going to be some that I've missed. That kind of covers as much as I can think of to share with Awakenings, how to get them, who to use them on, what's important. Generally, if you're starting the game and you're new, this isn't super important for you just yet. But again, if you do happen to find Epic Sage also maybe from doing your Tide missions, or maybe Guild Boss if you're somehow in Nightmare 2 already, then be careful about spending them. It's easy to throw them at random heroes and not get much benefit, or to throw them at heroes that you then pull endless dupes of. I think it's important to focus on the really core ones, such as some of the epic lords like Wrath and Pyros, or on staple DPS heroes. First one on Brienne is good, Greed is good, Iona is good, and also on important healers, such as Hollow or Dolores. These are really good heroes to build up in preparation for your guild boss team, but that's a bit further down the line, so maybe you can focus on your DPS for now. But just don't throw them away on heroes that you're pretty confident you won't be using long term, especially defenders. Defenders aren't really worth it. Even late game, the legendary defenders, only a few of them would benefit a lot from their soul stones. So... Primarily focus on DPS, as pretty much always with this game. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, feedback, or you want me to go over anything in more detail, or just general questions, then leave them below in the comments and I will get back to you. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Take care and bye-bye.